بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم سلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم has said that Allah loves him who earns by his own sweat of brow. That means who earns by his own hand and does not become a burden upon other people. Al-Kasibu Habibullah, one who earns, one who works to earn, is of course a friend of Allah. Allah loves him. Once it so happened that the companions were praising someone in the presence of the Prophet, that so-and-so is a very pious man, very righteous, upright person. And the Prophet listened to the praise and then he said, what does he do for his living? And they said, Ya Rasulullah, he does not do anything. He is a person who sits in the mosque or is always busy and engaged in worshipping, people feed him. People send their food to him so that a pious man, they help him to have his meals every day. The moment the Prophet heard this, he said, For Allah sakata an aini. If that is the case, then he has no value whatsoever in my eyes. That means I do not value him at all. For the man is a burden on other people. And then he said something which is so suggestive. He said, when a man does not earn by his own living, by his own brow, sweat of the brow, he does not work himself with his own hands to earn, then such a man tries to live by the faith and by the religion. That means he makes religion a tool of his income. He said it so long ago, that means the Prophet condemned this sort of practice where a man lives by his faith, he becomes a person who is paid because he is a religious person. Similarly, in the days of Imam Jafar Sadi in Hajj, Someone said, Ibn Rasulullah, in our kafila, that means in our caravan, there is a person who is very pious and uh, we are so fortunate that we have a man like him in our caravan of Hajj. And uh, he's always busy in ibadat, in dua and things like that. So Imam al -Islam said, then what about his meals? What about his personal work? Naturally, when you are traveling, you have got so much of work to do, you are not at home. He said, Abdul Rasulullah, we serve him. We are proud of having, of having a man like him with us. So we serve him, he doesn't have to move at all. The, the Prophet said, your thawab is much more than his. For he has kept his burden on your shoulders. فَهُوَ مَلْعُونٌ 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 such a person is cursed, is cursed, is cursed. وَإِنَّهُ كَلٌ عَلَىٰ عَاتِقَتِكُمْ He is a burden on your shoulders. Now, that means that we have got to see that the community involves and engages itself in earning. And therefore, when I said this, there are certain masail towards which I would like to draw the attention. It is Mustahab, but Mustahab Mu'akkad means emphasized that anyone who wants to start a business, any business, he would first ask the Masail about that business so that he does not enter into a transaction which is haram. And this is what all Aimma said, do business by all means. But before entering into any business, try to find out whether this business is halal or is not. And when you enter into any transaction, try to find out whether there's anything against Sharia in this particular transaction. So there are three to four things which we have got to keep in mind as mustahabbat 
First, the Prophet said to open your shop, a place of business early in the morning is mustahab. But it is makruh to open before sunset. Now, many people will say, what about the tobacconists and the news agents? They have got to deliver papers before sunset, before sunrise, sorry. That means they have got to do it uh, between five and six or four sometimes. You see, that if there are, or that sort of uh, helplessness where we cannot help, where the clientele expects that you will deliver to them what they want from you at that early hour, that is something else. Otherwise, for a retail shop which does not have to open as early as that, to open before sunrise is makru. But soon after sunrise, as soon as possible, to start your work and to, to begin with your shop is mustahab. And second thing he said, it is mustahab, which is psychological, but it is mustahab. That means Shariat looks at even our ordinary behavior. It is mustahab for a shopkeeper or a businessman to keep a smiling face and to treat his customers with a smile. Now, why they should do it, you know it better, because you are the Dukawalas, I am not. But if you, if you keep your mouth or your face drawn or hanging as if you have come just from the funeral, then of course you can imagine what impression you give to your customers. But the customers who feel that you, they are welcome in your shop, they always are inclined to come again and again. That is very, very simple psychology. But it is sunnah, not wajib, to keep one price for all. <laughs> it is makru to say that so and so has come, therefore I will reduce. No. One price for all. That is sunnah. It is sunnah to keep a price for all. At the same time, for ahlul ilm and taqwa, that means if an alim enters your shop, or one who is muttaqi, he enters your shop, and if you tell him that because you are alim or because you are muttaqi, therefore I am reducing it, that will not do. You just take from him whatever he pays you. Suppose you told him it is five pounds, and he said, I have got four pounds, you don't haggle about it. For ahlul ilm wa taqwa. But for others, there should not be any discrimination. One price for all. And it is mustahab that when someone enters your shop and buys something, and after having taken it home, if he returns it safe and intact and says that we have changed our mind and we would not like to have this, it is mustahab to accept it back. And the third thing is, it is mustahab for the seller and the vendor not to be very strict about his, his prices. That means if somebody requests you that would you please reduce, it is mustahab to reduce. So it is both ways. But otherwise the price must be one. So we will go on with this, inshallah ta'ala, to show us as to masail of deen and sharia are not confined to wudu and tayammum. They are also confined to our businesses and inshallah we will go to makruhat and also then to muharramat. That means those things which are haram to sell, haram to buy and haram to deal with. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our rizq grants us that which is halal inshallah ta'ala. However little it may be, if it is halal it remains. If it is haram it evaporates. We have seen many cases and there is no need to repeat. But from tonight, based on these things, and of course these two things will be connected while this is fiqh, together with fiqh, what I would like to tell our young people especially is that the essential quality of a human being, the essential quality, is not his wealth. Because it is not inherent. A man's quality has to be judged by what is inherent. Inherent wealth is not inherent. That means when we came, there was no health with us. And when we'll go, there'll be no wealth except kafan. Right? That is the only part of my wealth which will come with 
me in, in the grave and nothing else. The rest has all gone in advance if Allah has accepted it. So wealth is not something inherent in men. Therefore, it is not a quality. You acquire and then it goes. Even ilm is not inherent. Ilm is knowledge you acquire. And there comes a time in lifetime that you forget. How many ulama, how many knowledgeable people will tell you that at the decline of their lives, they'll say, now please don't ask me, I have forgotten. I knew what I knew, but now I have forgotten. The details are forgotten. So that ilm, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you are born from your mother's wombs knowing nothing. Then you acquire knowledge. And there comes a time when you come to the decline of your life, old age, when you don't know anything after having known. La ta'alamuna ba'da ilmin shay'a Means you knew, but then you have forgotten. That is natural. That is why old age is called second childhood, because you just don't remember. You knew, but now you don't know. And this is the reason why we have got a hukm. That if a mujtahid alam also starts forgetting, then it is wajib upon him to tell the people that don't do my taqlid anymore because I have started forgetting. That is wajib upon him. And this reflects against those people who say so and so is now very old mujtahid. And therefore, if he is so old, how can he guide? It is not our responsibility, it is the responsibility of the mujtahid. If he feels that the age has now told upon him and he cannot remember, then it is wajib upon him because this is not an authority which is dealing with temporal life. It is an authority which deals with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is responsible for our a'mal. Therefore he will say immediately, and it has happened in our history, two mujtahideen great have told the masses from the member that I have started forgetting. Don't do my taqlid from now. Not from tomorrow, from now. It has happened because there is nothing to be ashamed of. So this is not a quality. The quality of a person, you and I, men and women, is in its, his or her behavior and in akhlaq. That's all. That is the only thing which makes us something. Now if a child is taught akhlaq in madrasa, but is not taught how to practice it outside the madrasa, then all that is taught in the madrasa goes in vain. Because the akhlaq has got to be reflected in the society. Now if a boy comes here or a girl and meets an elderly, says salamu alaikum and sits with all the adab and etiquette, then we know that the madrasa has worked or the house has worked. At home there has been some training. Otherwise, it means that this is only a lesson which has been given. There is no practical application of it. The thing which we have got to teach our children first is how to behave. Right from childhood. In the Imam Bara or outside Imam Bara. We are not against the children who play. They must play after the children are there to play. They must play. Even if they play here in the Imam Bara, I have no objection to that. After the Majlis, they play. All right, let them play. Outside they play, let them play. But when they have been told by the elders or by the volunteers or whoever, then they understand that we have got to follow some rules. And that discipline is of utmost importance. Either we are lacking at home or we are lacking in the Madrasa. Either of these. These two things. And gunah e kabira for which there is a list, of course, so many of gunah. Mm -hmm. The root of gunah e kabira is in the lapse and failure of akhlaq. We don't understand this. We think akhlaq is something else. Gunah is something else. They are interconnected. And I for, therefore begin with the root of all evils, which begins is in arrogance and in pride. Takabur. Now, who is a mutakabir? Mutakabir is one who believes that there is none like him. In Farsi they say, Hamchu man di gari nist. Like me, there is nobody else. I am what I am. How does it happen? With the little blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extraordinarily given, a man loses his balance. If money 
comes in abundance. Suddenly he feels that now <coughs> I am something. You see, right. Ilm, knowledge, then a man feels that, well, I am something. In Tafsir as Safi, Mullah Muhsin Faiz Kashani writes that Hazrat Musa alayhi salam once felt, although there is no doubt, that he was the prophet, he was Ulul Azm, that means Tawrat was revealed to him. He just felt for a while that I, I mean, he was not telling anybody else, he just talked to himself that I feel there is none who knows as much as I do now in my era. Mullah Mohsin Faiz Kashani in Tafsir al Safi writes that immediately Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Jibreel and said, Ya Jibreel, Adrik Musa fa innahu kad halak. Go to Musa as soon as possible, for he is now on the path of destruction. He will be destroyed. He has begun thinking that there is no one who knows better than me. And that is why we find in Quran that Musa was ordered to go and find a man who knew better. And he met Khidr. And that whole episode in Quran is there, which I cannot at the moment repeat. But the only thing is this, that when they sat in a boat to sail, one of those birds, which we see, seabirds, dived to catch a fish. And it missed, it missed. The fish somehow managed to save itself. And when it flew again, one drop of water fell from the beak of the bird. And both of them were just looking at the bird. And when that small drop fell into the sea, Khidr said, Musa, have you seen this drop fall into the ocean? He said, yes. He said, your ilm and my ilm combined in the ocean of ilm is less than this drop. What are you thinking, Musa? What are you thinking? So, ilm can bring this. I think I said once, Shaykh Murtaza Ansari Rahmatullah was one of the greatest mujtahideen we have ever had. 200 years now. Up to now, the ulama mujtahideen, they read his books to become mujtahideen. Sheikh Murtaza Ansari Rahmatullah he had, a, he had a student. All the students were mujtahideen. They used to sit behind, near the member and they used to feel proud that we are students of Sheikh Murtaza. One student, as he advanced, came to a stage where he could not understand Sheikh Murtaza Ansari at all. He used to sit there when Sheikh Murtaza would give a discourse and explain he could not understand. He could not comprehend. So he went to Haram of Imam Ali alayhi salam. He caught the dhari of Imam and said, Ya Amir al muminin I have come to a stage where Shaykh tells something and I cannot understand. This is ilm. The depth and profundity of Shaykh is such that I cannot reach there. Please pray for me that the doors of ilm may open and I may be able to understand him. He cried and he prayed to Rakat Namaz. As he dreamt, he saw Imam Ali alayhi salam. Salawatullah alayhi salam. Mawla said, what is the problem? He repeated the problem. He said, come, come closer, come closer. As he came closer, Mawla read in his ear, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Only Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and said, go. From the next day, this man became rather too clever. I mean, things opened up as Sheikh would say before Sheikh would finish. He started understanding it, but then, you know, Takabur, he stood up sometimes and objected. Sheikh would tell him, sit down, I'm just going to solve that problem. Sit down, sit down. But the man could not contain himself. 
And he went on objecting, after objecting, to show off that I now know better. My friends, there are two types of a millionaire on earth. There are moneyed people who contain and you never know that there is something. And there are people who get few shillings and they can't contain. In Gujarati they say, Khali garo vage garo. Khali garo chalka hai. This is what it is. Khali chano vage garo. If you... These are khali chanas. Well... So Sheikh Ansari one day saw that this man has gone beyond his limit now. So when he descended from the mimba, he told him, my friend, just come closer, come closer to me. And he told him very politely, he said, the man who read in your right ear, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, has read in my ear, up to Walawali. <laughs> Contain yourself. Don't be proud. Allah gives you something, try to contain. The moment you start, then all the, uh, all the guna starts from this. Why doesn't a man do a sajda? Tell me. Why doesn't he even pray if you go deep? I mean, I'm trying to be as deep as possible. Psychologically, if you go into the mind of those who refuse even one sajda, is nothing but takabbur. Something, somewhere in him, either from having passed his A-levels gloriously and brilliantly, or having attained his doctorate, or having obtained a windfall of cash, uh, suddenly he has acquired a self-sufficiency thinking that I am what I am and there is none. And that prevents, if you go deep into it, knowledge, slight philosophy. While we are still scratching the surface, we think we have re reached the <coughs> depth. Sir Isaac Newton, who held water in physics for 300 years, died saying that I am like a boy sitting at the shore of the ocean of knowledge collecting pebbles. I haven't seen the ocean. So there are people who know what knowledge is and there are people who don't know. In Urdu there, is, there are some Ash'ar, Ash'ar of Rind, Rind. Rind was a good shayar. He says, Bade muzi ko mara, nafsya mara ko ghar mara. You have really killed a very strong enemy of yours, very harmful enemy. If you have killed your nafsi ammara, that nafs which leads you to sin. Nihango ajdahao shere nar mara to kya mara? In place of it, if you killed one python or you killed a lion, you haven't killed anyone. Bare muvi ko mara nafsi ammara ko garma. O gaya shaitan mara ek hi sajda na karne se. Agar lakhon baras sajde me sar mara to kya mara? This is what it is, takabbur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, Fakhruj, inna alayka la'nati ila yawmiddin. Get out from here. Upon you is my curse forever. Inshallah, we'll continue. Assalamu alaikum.